and here you go that's how it will look like when the blue is the magnitude that will depend entirely on the application that's going to be reading this motion vector so for example out of after effects we'll be reading uh, using a plugin called real smart it is not going to be using this type of motion vectors therefore uh, for this exercise I'll be using that in out of after effects so I'm going to disable the blue is magnitude when we disable that or we turn it off that means uh, we're not going to be using the blue uh, and rather we'll be using the red and green in here to calculate the directions and magnitude as well there's now for the floating point format 0 is the default that means off there's no going to be floating point if you give it 1 this is the telling it's actually calculate the floating point to be written when you do the render and if you give it a value of 2 it will also take the pixels aspect ratio in consideration when it's writing the floating point so we're gonna set this back to 0 blur environment that means if the camera is moving and the environment behind the character for example in here that we see movement in it that will also be enabled as well but since this is a camera still and it's just the character is the one that's moving there's no need for it so I'm gonna disable that pixel threshold that means how minimum movement that the pixel will have to do before it calculated in the motion vectors so for example if I set this to a value of uh, 50 that means as long as the pixel did not move more than 50 don't give it motion vectors so you can disable some of the motion vectors according to the movement of the pixels itself so sim similar to what we talked about in the MIP motion blur the last thing in here is the uh, output to the frame buffer and you will need to take that if you if you want to a different frame buffer we will need a custom shader for this use coverage if you were using the coverage remember that we looked at in here if we were using coverage I would have enabled that in here but since we're not then it's gonna be disabled so we're pretty much rendering to render now you will have two choices either render this scene once to give you the images as this and then render it one more time to give you the motion vectors but this is not going to be very efficient what we need actually is a solution to output this rendering to a frame buffer this way we don't have to repeat the render of course you can do it in render layers but it's not really optimum solution you need to output this or we need to figure a way to take this to the frame buffer and the way to do that we're going to use the custom frame buffer in uh, pre-2009 there was an option under the frame buffer here that will say create custom buffer but since this now using the passes and the passes are using that buffer you don't want to be conflicting with it that's why they hit it so for this we're going to start using a uh, the mill script that actually create that custom buffer and I just wrote it down here for you in a big spot so you guys can capture it and the first one is create node mint array user buffer and the reason I don't want to use the uh, default command from here because if I do that it creates it but it doesn't give me the option to use any custom frame buffer there's a checkbox here that should do that so let's just me do undo for this one and I'm gonna use now the mill script so create node mint array user buffer copy that go my script editor and you'll see now it created it and since that's the first one it created so it gave it a value of one so mint array user buffer one I'm gonna go back to my camera and if I hit create under the mint array output shader I need now to connect it so I'm going to connect adder minus F mentor user buffer one message to the my default options and once I did that you see now there's that option that I was talking about use user frame buffer it was disabled before but once we did that it's up here now so I can now check it and by default it will pick the buffer that was there if I had multiple buffers I will have the pull down menu to choose from again all I wanted is that option to come up for me I'm just gonna choose a file mode uh, choose a format for example TIFF and we give it a name as a postfix so your file name will be whatever the file name that you're gonna render underscore that name that you're gonna put in here so let's call that vector render now if I render this you still gonna get the motion vector on top of your render because the motion vectors was not assigned to go to a frame buffer so for that you gotta make sure that you go to the motion vector tab again and in here remember we said we can output this to output this we're gonna use a custom shader but this time we're gonna take it to the frame buffer so there's no need for the shader I'm gonna assign it to 
a value. So if it's the first one in the buffer, I could should have said zero. And actually, if you're using my 2008, place zero here, and it will output correctly. But since this is 2009, and, and I don't want to conflict with the uh, render passes, because they use the buffers as well, so I'm going to give this a value of one. Now I'm just going to adjust my render settings to render TIFF and 24 frames and padding by 2. And I'm ready, but pretty much it going to do render, batch render. In order to see this file as output, you need to do a batch render. It's not going to show up in your render view. So I'm just going to pause the recording and come back once the render is done. Now in After Effects, I'm going to go grab my animation sequence. I'm just going to choose Unmatted and now grab the motion vectors. As you see now the naming convention came out correctly so I have my rendered image name followed by the underscore and the post facts that we chose. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a background image and we're done. So just going to put everything together now. So here is my animation sequence and you'll see the girl now is running towards the edge and of course take a nice big leap. So let's go to a frame 13, pretty much the frame that we were using in Maya. Let's grab the background image and put it in here. Okay, so we see now there's no motion blur, obviously. For this, now to use the motion vectors, I'm going to use a plugin for After Effects that's called Real Smart, powered by a company called Revision. And as you can see here from their uh, URL, revisionfx.com, and the product is called Real Smart. Uh, this is the one that we're going to be using today. If you right click, you'll have Effect, and then you can choose the plugin from here. And you'll see it automatically, the plugin does calculation between the frame before and frame after, and see if the pixel is moving and blur it and give you the motion blur. So the plugin automatically has a built in way of motion blur and post. But since we are using the uh, motion vectors, I'm just going to go back to my project here and uh, grab the motion vectors at the bottom. Let's actually see that so you guys can see how it will look like. And, uh, since I don't need that anymore, I can go back to the effect panel on the uh, animation itself, and you have an option that says the alternate motion source is what. So you can say, I want it to be the motion vectors. And you'll see now a very similar effect from the previous built-in. But you can obviously, because if you are using the motion vectors and you want to customize it, it will be more powerful here to use. So you see now the motion blur has been added on the fly. So this was the how to use the uh, MIP motion vectors in Maya and output them in After Effects or uh, the other post application that you have. And the end result, you'll have a motion blur that happens on the fly. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this session, and I'm looking forward to talking to you more.